So what's the secret of the Italian ship disaster and all those that died? Well, it's really not a secret at all, but nowhere in uh, the dinosaur corporate horror media have I seen really people discuss the fact that in case after case, over and over again, in major disasters where big institutions, big corporations, or big governments are involved, uh, does the system actually take care of the little people? And that's because uh, big institutions are always filled with bureaucracy. And bureaucracies always seek uh, to basically limit liability. And so the individuals involved are all denying responsibility. And so when you actually have a big crisis take place, well, everybody's there passing the buck. And you see this in modern society. You see this in large urban centers in China and the United States and Europe, where there'll be a woman who's been stabbed laying in the middle of the road for two hours as hundreds of cars and pedestrians go by. I mean, the cases are legion. And it's the same thing here. Uh, this captain first tried to blame the charts and the GPS, but he was clearly going right by the side of the island. Then once the ship struck the rocks, uh, the captain was basically telling the crew everything was fine, telling the people, don't worry, we've just lost some power, some generators. This went on for hour after hour after hour as the ship even began to list and lean. And of course, the people that got off and actually survived were the guest on the ship, the passengers who didn't buy into this. Now, it turns out what was happening is the captain and the crew, which was around 20% uh, of the total 4,000 plus that were on board, were basically getting off themselves first. And when you have a immoral society, when you have a society where it's every man for himself, you're going to see this happen. I mean, the Titanic was a big disaster. And a giant fiasco, but the captain did go down with the ship. Many of the top officers went down because that was the honorable thing to do. Now, of course, the rich people in first class basically had the doors locked and left the poor people in steerage uh, to die to make sure that they got life rafts. And when you saw the rich, you know, basically demand that they be let on the lifeboats first, you really see a parable or a parallel to everything that we face today. The globalists think that the world belongs to them, and they're always going to try to protect themselves from any type of risk, and they're going to do that at the expense of the general public. The secret of this disaster is you're never 100% safe. No one can protect you better than yourself, and government and big institutions can't and won't protect you. When you count on someone else for your welfare, for your security, for your future, when you hand over authority for your life, it always results in one thing societally, and that is corruption and tyranny. And the controllers that are providing for the general public and directing the general public, basically seeing us as cattle and feeding on us. You know, government takes taxes from the American people and then claims that they're providing for us. So you see, it's another cruel lie. They take Social Security from the public for decades and then basically steal the money without investing it and then later hold everyone hostage and say, we've got to raise taxes, our Social Security will go belly up, and then they only steal that new money. But this system that seeks to turn us into creatures that are totally dependent on the system is always at odds and eternally at war with rugged individualism and true independence. And every couple days, I see articles out of Oklahoma, California, Texas, where women are in their home alone and men with guns and knives are busting down their doors, coming in to attack them, and the women call 911 and ask permission to shoot the armed intruders. Just today, I saw an article that was in the Galveston newspaper down in South Texas where a 15-year-old girl got out of the shower. Her parents were gone. 
There were two burglars inside the house. She ran to her dad's desk, got his handgun, went and menaced them with the firearm. And I heard local talk show hosts who were supposedly conservative here in independent Texas saying, should she have had that gun? Should her father have let her have that gun at her fingertips? This idea that she's the criminal. And you look at England where they charge people who defend themselves in home invasions, even with their bare hands. A nanny state does not want you to defend yourself. They do not want you to even know that you legally have a right and a duty to do that. They want you to think that it's the state that has to protect you. And as the state takes over the role of protector, like in Chicago and New York, the crime rates only explode. And then what does the system do? They come out and say the answer is more police, more surveillance, more control. The bigger the drug war gets, the more drugs are shipped in because the price is higher. The more checkpoints, the more home invasions, the more warrantless searches you supposedly have to go through. This is how the tyrants convert our society into an oppressive system. And the hallmark of an oppressive despotic tyranny is that it always seeks to disarm the population and to punish those that seek to defend themselves. You know, I'm an eighth generation Texan. My children are ninth generation. We were Texans before it was even Mexico, back when it was Spain. And growing up at a very young age, I was taught to use firearms. And I was taught to use a firearm if anybody ever tried to assault me. And it's so alien to someone like myself that was brought up with basic freedom to see domesticated populations on the news and calling into talk radio saying that the young girl should have just begged the robbers to not rape her uh, instead of actually chasing them out of the house. It just shows how those of us that love freedom truly are from a completely different dimension from those that love servitude and the nanny state. Now, I've got a few examples uh, of this here. Oklahoma teen mom asked 9-11 for permission, fatally shoots intruder on New Year's Eve. And here's the 15-year-old girl is safe after police say she turned a gun on two men who broke into her home, according to the Galveston Daily News. But let me show you what the nanny state is doing in the U.S., England, and Canada. Here is an unbelievable article. Homeowner fined $5,200 for growing cucumbers, plans lawsuit. That's right, I saw one of the city council members in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a few years ago, come out and say, we need inspections of backyard gardens because you might be growing marijuana. The idea that growing things on your own property, that you're guilty until proven innocent, that there's a pre-crime there. But reading this article, they fly over in Canada, the U.S., and England with helicopters. And if they see a heat residence, they use that without a warrant in many cases, to break into your house. In England, in one case, it was a guinea pig heater. My son has a lizard and has a little heat lamp, and I'm told that'll get you a good SWAT team raid. But it gets worse. All over the Western world, police analyze your power consumption. I was talking to an Austin cop more than a decade ago, and he said, yeah, one time we broke in without a warrant during the day to this 90-something-year-old retired UT a uh, fish scientist, I forget the technical name, and she had all these fish tanks in her house and it was using more power than, quote, one woman should, according to the census in her house. So we broke in and saw that it was fish tanks and just left. Well, right here in this article out of Canada, it says you can be fined more than $10,000 for growing vegetables in your house. And do you know why? Because... It might be drugs sometime. And you know why they fine you tens of thousands of dollars or more for simply growing vegetables on your own house? Well, because it's not out in plain view. And that just can't be trusted. Kind of like the woman with the garden up in Michigan who had to be criminal.